guys, so today I wanted to share five art museums in Tokyo, Japan in the Roppongi district. Starting off in this fancy upscale area called Roppongi Hills, this really tall building is the Roppongi Hills Mori Tower, which is 54 stories tall, making it the sixth tallest building in Tokyo. And this building is our first stop, the Mori Art Museum. Now this entrance is also where you enter a couple of different things because the Mori Art Center includes not just the museum, but also art galleries and two observation decks. So they'll ask you what you want to visit there to determine what ticket you need to buy. Come here if you like modern and contemporary art with a good mix of Western and East Asian artists in a modern building with a view. A short walk away is the Suntory Museum of Art. Located in this small complex called the Tokyo Midtown Garden Side, you'll find shops and restaurants. If you're looking for more traditional Japanese art, this is a great place to start. They feature ceramics and brush painting, and it's a pretty small museum, but they change exhibitions every two months. So take a look at the schedule before arriving to see if you're interested in the exhibition. Literally across the bridge and through a garden is the 2121 design site. Now look at how cool this building is. This museum is great for people interested in more interactive and mixed media works. I imagine it would be a great stop for families as the kids will have lots of things they can touch and play with. They even have workshops and events, so it's a pretty hands-on experience. Next up is a 12-minute walk to the National Art Center of Tokyo. Now, first of all, the building itself is pretty cool to begin with. They don't actually have a permanent collection, so the whole building is exhibition space that rotates various shows throughout the year. While I was there, they had two main exhibitions, one from the Louvre in Paris and one of Rene Magritte. For the main shows, you purchase a ticket at the ticket booth outside the main entrance. There are also some smaller shows of local artists where you pay an entrance fee at the door of individual shows. This is a great place if you're looking for a one-stop shop for various types of arts in a super cool building, but definitely check out what the current exhibitions are during your stay, as paying for each exhibition can get pretty expensive. Last stop is the Watari Museum of Contemporary Art. It's the last one not only because the path made sense to me, but it's also open the latest out of the bunch. Technically, I think this area is part of Shibuya, but it's walking distance, so I'm including it. The Watari Museum is definitely a really hip museum. They have works from really famous modern and contemporary artists. This is a great place who are looking for cool contemporary artwork by a good mix of Western and East Asian established and emerging artists. The museum also has a cafe and a store with an insanely cool vintage postcard selection. And if you watched my June favorites, you know my love of postcards. So there's five art museums and galleries I visited. There's definitely more that I didn't have time or energy to get to, and you can definitely visit all of these in one day, which is what I did. They're all within walking distance in the order that I shared them, but you can hop on a train if you get tired. Hopefully this video gives you an idea of what to expect and what you may or may not want to visit. Thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more of my Japan adventures, I have a whole bunch of videos on my personal vlog channel, which I will link in the description bar below, where I post a whole bunch of things, especially food, because I love food. I love food so much. I also have a video of five things to do while in Roppongi Hills, so go ahead and check that out of things to do while in the area. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.